G'day guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I have a very special video. I thought I would get some of the smartest footballing minds in the country and discuss the up and coming final series. I'm gonna call this the YouTube AFL or AFL YouTube round table. I'm gonna bring in the guest for today. I have the pair. Pear, how are you mate? Hello Caden, it's good to be on the round table, looking forward to it. I have true footy, Jesse, what's going on? Oh, not a lot mate, stoked to be making the uh, the old debut I think on your channel, um, which is great. Yeah, pumped. Well about bloody time and I've got <laughs> the man himself, Drewzy, how are you Drews? Saving the best for last mate, yeah, doing very well, doing very well. Adam Chera has gone, we don't want to talk about that, but I'm, I'm keen for the finals anyway. <laughs> It is going to be a massive finals series. I just wanted to get everyone's thoughts on the season so far. I might start with you, Drews. Um, obviously, the Dockers didn't quite have the season that you thought they might. They fell a little bit short. How did you see the Dockers season? How did you see the season as a whole? Uh, bipolar is the best way to describe <laughs> it. Showing up some weeks and, uh, yeah, really performing and then other weeks just not backing it up. Like, we saw two really good examples of that uh, when we, we won the Derby, then we got pumped by St Kilda the next week and we beat Richmond then got pumped by Brisbane the following week. So it's just, uh, yeah, this consistency that we're having issues with, just bringing consistent pressure week to week, quarter to quarter and even contest to contest, as Justin Longmuir said, just not motivated at times, it seems, when there are, when it doesn't suit the players, some of them just don't get up for it, except a, a, a certain bunch. Did, did it come down to a maturity factor, you think? Because I think they look quite, um, they, they look like a good young group, uh, like just from the outside, from you know a Vic Bias point of view, I think the Dockers look like they're well on the way to being a competitive footy side, so do you reckon it was maturity in the end? Um, I just think there's a, a couple list cloggers still in there that we, <laughs> we, we've got rid of eight players in the last sort of two months. We delisted four today. Obviously, Stephen Hill retired. We got rid of Reese Conker. Obviously, Chair has gone. He's anything but a list clogger. I've already mentioned him twice. I missed you so much. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I just think there's a, a couple blokes that don't pull their weight every week. And I think at the start of the season, we had the most shuffled side in the competition, which just showed that um, players aren't performing consistently. So we just need to, to uh, increase the armory that we have in each position. Yeah, for sure. And um, with Adam Cherry going out, I think, you know, a couple of draft picks, maybe you can on-trade them, or maybe you could potentially pick up some more youth in that WA crop. Uh, I'll move on to Jesse. Jesse, how did you see the Eagles' season? They were probably the team that I thought would have rounded out the top eight, but they fell just short towards the end of the season. How did you see it all unfolding for your team? Well, as I'm sure many people who have <laughs> followed True Footy this year, they would know I'm absolutely <laughs> thrilled with this season from the Eagles. Uh, no, definitely probably one of the most disappointing seasons, probably in about eight years since John Wusher uh, left the club. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it was one of those years that I think the, with the, the, pro the promise the Eagles had, um, I genuinely thought we should be in the mix for the flag this year, even if it, as an outside chance. And we were kind of uh, flattered a little bit by the fact that I think a lot of teams in that eight race had a sh shocking season as well. And it would have almost taken just about 11 wins to make the finals this year, which has got to be the lowest since we've been an 18-team mm -hmm. comp. So uh, to finish ninth, it looks better than it actually was for West Coast. And there's a lot of serious questions to be asked. Yeah, it was sort of crazy towards the end of the year. I don't know how... Uh, you other blokes saw it, but that that sort of 12th to 8th spot was just completely up for grabs. Um, Jesse, do you think it's one of those ones where the Eagles uh, could bounce back straight away another preseason? Obviously, they've been competing in finals for a lot of years now, so they've got the experience. Do you see them being competitive next year, or do you think it needs a little bit of a freshen up over the next year or two? I think there's always room to freshen up. I think uh, before the form downturned, I think it's really obvious we need to hit the draft regardless what happened this year just because of our list composition. But I think um, I've snapped back into preseason optimism now that round 23 is finished. And I kind of feel <laughs> as though, you know, our list, uh, our issues this year weren't due to age so much. So if we can rectify things like uh, maybe a few sore bodies, I think players were playing sore, uh, a game plan that was outdated, no plan B. Um, and I think with maybe a bit more of an underdog status, I actually do think the Eagles can uh, mix it with the best next year as well. I'm not saying they're going to be top four, but um, I'll back us in to play finals next year. 
Yeah, for sure. I think uh, West Coast, from my point of view, have that sort of list and that sort of uh, culture, that sort of Sydney Swans and uh, Geelong culture where if they do drop out, it's not going to be for too long. So I have no doubt that the Eagles could be competitive in the next year or two. I'm going to move on to the pair, the man, the myth. Mate, your team has come from the absolute clouds (laughs) to finish top two. (laughs) Did you ever see this sort of end of the year coming maybe five or six weeks ago? Um, no, I didn't. To be honest, when we were watching the D's uh, pummel us at the Adelaide Oval, I thought, well, this is the start of possibly us being that you know fifth to eighth bracket, uh, making finals but not really making much damage. And then you know for us to have six wins on the trot, knock off teams that we should have. Um, some were more convincing than others, and then to beat the Bulldogs. Um, in what was one of the better games of the season and pretty much dominate them in that last round besides the scoreboard probably shows that I think a lot of uh, people outside of Port Adelaide are going to be a little bit wary of us coming into finals. I still, even this week, coming in with all the talk, us playing Geelong, we're still we're favourites on, uh, <laughs> on the markets, but uh, the, the fans aren't really considering us much. But I think, you know, to have that end of the season gives us so much momentum going into the final series and... I'm just I'm glad that we finished the season top two because that was kind of my expectation um, after last year and to continue that on um, into this year and give us a red hot crack at it along with your boys it could be a uh, a massive uh, late charge into September. I'll chime I'll chime in next if that's all right, Anthony. Yeah, how how it. much confidence or lack of confidence do you have given that the Bulldogs? have been in pretty average form in the last few weeks. So you've knocked them off, but so did Hawthorne. And uh, who else beat the Dogs the week before that? Uh, Essendon. Yeah, Essendon. Es- Essendon beat the Dogs, yeah. So when you look at those performances earlier on in the season, when the Bulldogs come and beat you quite convincingly, Geelong come and beat Port quite convincingly, and Melbourne did it as well, are you still scared that that could happen, or do you think you've improved against the top side since then? I'll let you in on a little secret. So the feeling I have every single week for a game is never wrong. So for some reason... Like the, the vibes, game man. The, Brisbane, <laughs> the game against Brisbane, I said from the outset, we'd lose. We lost convincingly. The Ds, the, the whole structure of that day was thrown off due to a certain someone coming to watch the game. And, uh, <laughs> um, so that felt, that felt a little bit off. <laughs> um, but to answer your question, I think I, I think the adversity we had in the last six weeks, you know, with South Australia going to lockdown, the whole COVID situation, we were based out of Melbourne for three weeks. And as I said, getting players back, the whole maturity of the group changed. And there's a whole different look on Port Adelaide when you've got a full squad, you've got um, the maturity to win games. Like our last... Like six games this year, I think, were under a goal or under two goals or something, and we were able to win those games, which a lot of people say it's luck, but I think that's maturity. That's something that you not a lot of teams get. Um, so I think it, it gives me confidence, and for some reason, I've last year I had the feeling that we'd do well, but I don't think we'd win the flag. This year, I there's something about it. I don't want to sound cocky, <laughs> but there's just something about the Port Adelaide this year. And if we get two home finals and go on our way to a Perth granny, anything's possible. I'll be there cheering them on for you. How far is um, Arazio off? Um, Arazio should play this week against Geelong. So that's Huge. a certain deal. I don't know about Georgiatis. I think he's still 50-50 at this stage of recording. Um, <laughs> I'd, I'd say I reckon that'll be the one change. Arazio in, Georgiatis out, which to me doesn't make much difference. Um Georgi Artis is exciting, but we still have the three tools and Laddins and Marshall, and the structure doesn't change too much. We'll just have an extra crummer, and, and you've got a ratio who's got the brain smarts of a perfect crummer. Um, it'll be no worries. Yeah, I'll throw it over to uh, Jesse and Druzy uh, regarding Port Adelaide. Do you guys see a little bit of a shift in the Port side over the last six weeks? I think for me personally, once they jumped into that top two, my mindset and my view of them shift shifted dramatically uh, because they get that home final I'm not sure whether they're going to get a second home final uh, but they certainly get the, the qualifying home final which I think is all fair um, in love and war so where's Port Adelaide now 
in sort of the power rankings um, compared to what they were probably five or six weeks ago. You go. Uh, yeah, I think we were kind of discussing, you've got to give them a little bit more respect now when the criticism uh, previously was that they couldn't knock off top teams. And they, they did just beat the Dogs in Melbourne. And as Drewsy correctly points out, the Dogs aren't in the, in the best form at the moment. But uh, I think it's too dismissive to not give Port that uh, respect for the reasons Anthony outlined as well. They've had their own adversity to win on the track and to put together a 17 win season. Like that's usually a, um, mm. the threshold of a, a premiership quality side. And I think as well, um, as Anthony touched on there, they're a bit healthier than they were mid season when they were taking on some of these top teams and, Zach Butters in particular is a player that's back into the side and I think come finals, uh, some home finals, I think they might even get the second one, Caden, because I think if they win or lose, um, so they'd host a semi in Adelaide and then host a prelim if they win, uh, unless the the game that's shifted. So with one, being one of the few teams that gets genuine home finals this year, I think uh, I think they're in the mix, definitely. I was just going to say, I've been copping it from Port Adelaide fans <laughs> in the comments recently just because I, I haven't really been rating them. And in my finals predictions, I had them going out in the prelim and I had so many Port Adelaide fans say, keep down us, Ruzi, keep down us. So I'm, I'm a bit scared <laughs> that the, the Port Power are going to come through. But no, I'll give, the, I'll give them every chance to, to go all the way. They're... Um, the only side in the top four that beat all the bottom ten sides. So, you know, they're, they're really consistent. Um, I don't think they have to, like, find... I don't know. They're not... They don't find it hard to be motivated for games. Mm-hmm. They're just, like, as Anthony said, mature, and they can they can perform just about every week. You're not uh, worrying about them not showing up like my side. So, um, yeah, I give them every chance to go all the way this year, to be honest. Can I give you a stat? And it's yeah. a very interesting one. So the last time Port Adelaide finished 17 and 5 at the end of the season was 2004. We flag. won the flag. flag. That was the before Drew time... was born, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I was time... three. I remember it like it was yesterday. <laughs> yeah, and you also remember Fremantle's season too. Um, <laughs> the last time the Australia Olympic team finished with 17 golds was 2004 in Athens. So, <laughs> that's a bit of a long road. It was a full <laughs> moon for two weeks over the final series in 2004. And uh, yeah, and it was an eclipse on the Thursday as well. So, uh, for that reason, Port Adelaide are going to get we're, fucking pumped in the final. <laughs> we've also recruited Warren Treadray back, so it's all good. We're going to finish fine. No, it seems like the stars are aligning there for the pair. They're coming up against the Cats. Now, I have seen the full wrath of the Cats for 20-odd years now. They sort of make prelims for fun. I'm pretty sure they've made the top four eight times out of Chris Scott's 11 cracks at it or something silly, and he's missed the finals once. So they've just been a force to be reckoned with. But they're coming in with some bumpy form. They were... Not convincing against GWS, and they got done. They were unconvincing against Saints for three quarters, but got over the line, and then played a good eight-minute patch against the Ds before relinquishing a 44-point lead. Um, where do you boys see the Cats sitting? Because I feel like they're it's it's sort of up to them. If they want it, they could probably have the flag because they're so powerful. But if they don't turn up and they don't sort of respect the games that they've got ahead of them, they are vulnerable. Yeah, I agree. I think um, their X factor is up forward. You know, they've got the two pillars in Hawkins and Cameron. Um, and if they're not firing, they've still got their small forwards. You know, Gary Rowan uh, can hit the scoreboard. You've got Dangerfield who can play in multiple positions. And I still think their midfield um, is one of the better ones in the business at the moment. But I think what's going to hurt them is their star defender, Tom Stewart. He's missing. He's been the one that's been the pillar down there and their defense just looks a little bit um you know un uneasy when he's not in there and you know you mentioned last week's game with the D's um coming back from forty four points down. Once the D's got it inside fifty, the D's were all over them. And the cats <laughs> couldn't handle that pressure and you know you had look Maxi Gorn basically took an under con- un- <laughs> uncontested mark in the last second. Um and you know that's the thing. Like it comes down to team defense, team pressure around the contest, and I think that's where they can be exposed. So if they're not winning the footy from their star players, I think they're in trouble. Yeah, Geelong haven't really played a four-quarter effort in the last month, have they? They got off to a slow start against St. Kilda, same against the Ds, and then didn't show up in that second half, really. Um, 
but when they when they turn it on, there's not mm-hmm. many better in the in the competition. I don't think like they just have these waves of intensity, and they'll just pop goals out their wazoo. So um, yeah, what do you reckon, Jesse? Yeah, I think if you look at pretty much any Premiership side over the last 20 years, you could probably go into their season and isolate a period where they looked terrible, where there was a period that everyone doubted them. And uh, that's just the natural ebbs and flows of, of teams. And there's a lot said about, you know, timing your, your slump. Um, and, <laughs> you know, you're looking at the dogs and you're thinking, oh, well, it certainly cost them top four. So that's the worst case scenario. But, um, but in Geelong's case... I think it'd be great for them if they had that pre, pre-finals pre bye to uh, to sort of shake off the loss. But the other side of looking at that that last game against the Ds where, you know, they were absolutely mauled in the second half was they still got 44 points up on the team that uh, Druzy and I agreed are going to be the uh, the premiership favourite. So uh, with their finals experience, the fact that, you know, not too many blokes in that team have actually won a flag. They've gotten close. I think there's going to be a lot of hunger and the heartbreaker last year. I think, I think they're going to be a really dangerous opponent for anyone. They're the best. And we I was just going to say, Caden, we're, we're forgetting about... You are the host and you are dictating the tempo of this show, but your team finished on the top of the ladder for the first <laughs> time since 1964, mate. How does that feel? Tell us. And the fashion it went down in, it was mate. absolutely bonkers. <laughs> yeah, look, well, I was just about to say, like, the Cats, for me, are the best 666 team in the comp. They can break a, apart games in that five-minute patch. And, yeah, that game on the weekend, I... So it certainly felt firsthand the wrath of the Geelong Footy Club. When it goes centre bounce clearance goal, centre bounce clearance goal, they get it into the six six six. You know we can't chuck a spare man in defence like you could back in the day. It's all one on ones, and the one on ones are Hawkins, Rowan, Cameron, um, and a couple other nipsies. It is quite intimidating, but I was yeah really proud of the D's effort. I felt like I I was convinced it was over. To be honest, I. Um, Flown the. I turned the telly off. I thought it was over. I missed it. <laughs> I had essentially turned the telly. I was almost half a game into Evo, and I thought, oh, geez, I better better turn this thing back on. But I I had all but given up, and that that Geelong Footy Club at their best is intimidating. I took a lot of comfort out of the comeback, and I've taken so much spirit out of the win. Like to get over the line and get it done, it gives me so much belief in the club, and I can't imagine what the players. Uh, feeling, um, did it did it make you doubt the D's at all when you saw the halftime scoreline? If they had a loss by about thirty, would you still have that faith in them as some of you guys do, tipping them to go far towards the end of the season? Or does that sort of dint their premiership um, belief? That sort of little patch that they had against the Cats. I don't think so because like they've had the best record against top eight sides. So going into finals. Happy days. The only sides you've struggled against are sides that are at the bottom, just about. Your Hawks, Collingwood, Adelaide. You guys have been good against the top eight. I haven't, I haven't really had any question marks against you against the top eight sides. Could you bring it to the best? I think, as well, just to jump in, the D's mentality is one of the best in the comp. <laughs> like, I think the way they're able to just switch on when they need to. Yeah, they were 44 points down, but to be honest... Um, you know, you were playing... It's not like it was a dead rubber and Geelong just turned it off. And they probably did because they were 44 points up and they thought they were home. But, you know, to to switch it on with a minor premiership at stake away from the G at GMHBA, which has been basically the haunted house of the Gs <laughs> for a while. But a graveyard of the demons. <laughs> the graveyard, mate. The, the 20... 233 to 47 or whatever it was all those years ago. But to do that is, that's for me, like, I can believe in all the Port Adelaide stats and how we're travelling, but the mentality of the Ds is winning this year's premiership. So the Ds either win it or they bottle it. It's as simple as that. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd say that that, um, that final quarter from the Demons did swing our power rankings. I, I don't know about Drew's, but for me, I would have probably gone ahead with Geelong swung first. Swung up more than my rankings, mate, I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I reckon I would have had Geelong on top had they held on for that win. And I, mm. I, for the Ds, I think we probably would have given them the GMA, GM, GP, oh my God, GMA, GMA. <laughs> yeah. Um I would have given Spin them the excuse, to be honest. But uh, yeah. the fact that they sort of dug deep and showed that, then that... That shows, uh, as um, Anthony said, that the mindset, the mentality of that group, uh, that really 
that really bodes well. What do you guys think, I guess, of the, the curse around the minor premiership in terms of how rarely the minor premier goes on to win the flag? Is that something that you think uh, is worth considering? We're getting now um, Anthony's crystal ball again. I'm <laughs> believing it. I'm believing it. That's, I'm definitely believing it. <laughs> well, yeah, so the the last team to win after being the minor premiers were Hawthorne, either in 15 or 13, one of those years. 13, but, yeah. Um, so it doesn't happen too often. I wonder why that's the case. Like, obviously, most years, it's quite weird, most years, years when someone finishes first there's another team sort of underneath like a Richmond or a Hawthorne and you go well you know whether it's Adelaide or Sydney or someone who finishes on top you sort of go oh well there's someone else better than them so it sort of doesn't sort of speak for the entire ladder but this year I feel like Melbourne have been the best team like there's no one underneath um us who I think has had a better season just in isolation I think Melbourne has had as many flawed performances as a few others. But um, I think we've had the least flawed performances. So it's a weird one where I feel like it's sort of just that we finished on top. And um, yeah, it's it's quite quite funny that now that adds that little bit of extra pressure. Um, because I, <laughs> like I right now sort of think, oh yeah, if we sort of bow out, it's still a great season. We've had, you know, we've seen some success, but that's not really the mindset. If you can't pinch it this year, when are we going to pinch it? So yeah. it's like, it's now or never in my mind. Well, you guys have started and finished the season just as impressively, you know, like you guys come out of the blocks, what, 9-0, and you finish the season beating Geelong, coming back from 44 points and that game against Adelaide at the G uh, last week was really impressive as well. Um, just on the point of finishing on top, the one season that Frio finished on top was 2015. Um, <laughs> but the the thing was, like, you could tell we were gassed at the end of the year. Like, there were there were hungry sides coming for us, and um, it was just like we were running, running, running really quick, and then slowly falling over. The days look like they're they're strong in their stride, and they're they're ready for September. Does that? Yeah. Well, does the no, you does bear. the boy getting taken away from? The after the round twenty three going to finals, does that affect? Do you reckon that affects any team going into this one? I think it affects Geelong. I think it affects dogs. Dogs. There's a couple of teams. Geelong really want Mitch Duncan, Zach Tui. I think Mitch Duncan's in Zach Tui and Tom Stewart to be available over the next little bit. And to me, I don't know if I'm reading too much into this because whenever I call Geelong too old and too slow. You know, they're 44 points up on my team in uh, five minutes of football. So I won't say anything against them. But uh, just reading the tea leaves and some of the stuff Chris Scott was saying, he was really um, sort of lobbying for the buy and um, lobbying for a couple of other things like less time on the quarters. It sort of seems like he's aware that this team uh, is getting pushed to its absolute physical limit. Um I think it bodes well for a Melbourne footy club. I, I hope we win so then we do get that freshen up and other teams have to go through without the buy at all. That would be real war of attrition. But, yeah, I think there are a couple of teams that are affected by it. Who are you boys most scared of in the eight? Who do you not want to face? Well, I'm... Not not talking to you, Jesse, because our teams aren't <laughs> in the eight, buddy. Being the eight's overrated. Thanks for coming. Holidays, <laughs> baby. Holidays, baby. <laughs> well, for me, I'm scared of everyone. Um, like the, the, every team that we come up against, I go, geez, this, we're going to lose. But if I wanted to go down and drill down and be specific on a team that genuinely worries me and I would have sleepless nights going into the contest, I think it would be Sydney. Every time we've mm, ever played Sydney that. for 10 years, even when they dipped down and we were bobbing up, they would just beat us every year. They're that team that just beat us. And it's not a 40 point win it's always like a 15 20 point win and even this year we had to battle hard to get over the line by 10 points and that's the only time we've played them so i would be really nervous if we dropped the first one and then had to come up against the sydney in a semi oh, i'd i'd be so nervous oh, i'm i'm going melbourne only because <laughs> the, the way we played geelong earlier in the year um was unreal i thought and then we just made it into a grind and as you said the the cats just put on those five goals in a matter of minutes and um that was that after you know half time so i think for us it's the d's in particular because um their defensive structure structure is unreal and the way we enter our forward line can be clumsy it can be 
quite stupid and um, I think with Lever and May and then you've got you know Salem on the run and just countless amounts of players that the D's have down there that are generally tough and hard to beat we're relying on Dixon a skinny Marshall Laddams who's a part time <laughs> Ruckman and no Georgie Artis this time who was the only one when we played the D's earlier in the year that actually made an impact you know he took that potential mark of the year against Gorn and was able to you know get marks and goals when others couldn't so it's probably the D's for me and funny enough I think playing them in a granny we'd get them playing them in a prelim we wouldn't (laughs) Drews and Jesse so who do you think is the most ominous ominous side uh, left going into the rest of the final series Jesse you go first because I don't know what that word means (laughs) (laughs) Well, I butchered the first the first attempt at it. Um, you know what? I think Brisbane's being a little bit overlooked. Mm-hmm. I think they've Good got chat. a really, really quality side um, that when they're on, fi- on fire um, are really, really hard to stop. And uh, I think they played pretty competitively against Melbourne in that game in Sydney. Uh, you'll recall, Caden. Obviously, mm. you guys were too good in the end. But um, it was the sort of game where, you know... If, Melbourne are 5% off, Brisbane win that game. So um, I think with their finals experience now and they're a little bit more of a hardened uh, side, I think I, well, I've got them in the my grand final playing the Ds at the moment. Um, and I guess from a Port Adelaide perspective, Anthony, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like Brisbane generally kind of um, almost have the wood on you. Is that is that how you'd sort of say it? <laughs> yeah. No, they, they do. And I was going to say the, uh, the, the Lions, but I thought um, I'm just expecting the Ds to get straight through so I'm, I'm I'm hoping we don't meet the Lions because I don't know what it is like every time that would send the, the Lions to your side of the fixture if Port win oh well I hope the Lions win this week <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to play them Uh, Lads, I've just Googled the meaning of ominous and it's giving the worrying impression that something bad is going to happen. So uh, I'm ready and equipped to answer this question. Um, (laughs) No, I'm probably... I think the Ds are my favourites to to take it out, but I'd agree with Jesse. I think Brisbane are being a bit underlooked going into Mm. this this final series. Is there a team that plays like their their club name, like Lions? The Lions play like Lions. They hunt in packs. Like their midfield, their defence, and their forward, they all attack in units. Um, yeah, I'd say the Tigers. They're very... Yeah. Hey? The Tigers play the, like the Tigers. They hunt in packs. Yeah. That, that surge footy. What about the Demons? Um, Any satanic rituals going yeah, on? Yeah, they can sometimes torch the ball going inside 50. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I'd say, yeah, the Lions and the Ds are, are my favourites to take out the whole thing. And that's what I want the grand final to be. I think that's the most exciting final. That game at uh, at Giant Stadium earlier in the season was a cracker. So I, I really want to see that game again. Is there a, a player in particular in the top eight? Um, that you think is primed for finals. I'm going to be biased and kick things off, but the way that I've been seeing Clayton Oliver play in the last two weeks and the amount of energy that he's running around that football field with, I don't think we've seen him play finals football as a full-grown man, afl ready AFL footballer. He did quite well in 2018, but um, I'm really excited to see like a Clayton Oliver be... In a, in, a, in a qualifying final on a Saturday night, under the lights, I'm really keen to see how busy and how well he goes. So is there a sort of player now? Clayton Oliver might be too obvious, but is, is there anyone in particular throughout the top eight that you think could really take the finals by storm? I would have said Clayton Oliver. I, I was thinking Clayton Oliver. That performance against Geelong was one of the, the best <laughs> individual performances I've seen in a while. He is everywhere. He just outruns yeah. everyone, and he pops up for really important goals as well. I'd say... Um, for your boys, Anthony, I think the boy that will make the biggest difference would be if Charlie Dixon can just mm. pop up for for a bag of goals in a game. I think that'll make all the difference for the power, to be yeah. honest. Would you agree? Yeah. Um, Charlie's the barometer of Port Adelaide, no question about it. But I think um, if it's Port Adelaide in particular, it has to be... I think it's one of the old boys. And you're, gonna, you're all going to think, oh, Travis Boak, it's Anthony's favourite, blah, blah, blah. But I... The way he performed against the Dogs was very similar to Clayton Oliver. The way he was able to win the ball contestedly, but also I've never seen him play forward like he did on Friday night last week. Like he was leading up, he was beating Alex Keith to the to 
the lead quite easily, snapping goals, kicked two goals three and had 31. Um, if this is not the year for Boke and uh, Robbie Gray to win a flag, then I think they're going to miss their opportunity. Um, but if it's someone else outside, can you really go past Buddy Franklin? Mm. <laughs> Can't write him off. Can thousand, you? thousand goals coming up, maybe. Yeah, he's dangerous. What, what about your thoughts, Jesse? Well, I'm going to go ahead and show some love to a team we literally have not mentioned in this finals analysis, and that is uh, from the GWS Giants. I have this weird vision that I can't shake of Toby Green taking <laughs> wow. a mark in the deep into the fourth quarter, hard up against the pocket, taking a screamer, going back and slotting it from the boundary to send his team into a prelim that nobody saw coming. I've tipped all the favourites just about in my finals predictions, but with a player like Toby Green, he's a big game player. I wouldn't be surprised if he breaks a few hearts this September. We definitely also haven't mentioned Essendon either, so I'll yeah, just chuck in a Darcy Parish. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, I was thinking Stringer? like a Jake Stringer. A Jake yeah, Stringer really in like a, quali- uh, not qualifying, a um, elimination or semi-final could just blow the game to pieces. I think Jake Stringer's prime for some finals footy. A couple of other young boys I want to mention are probably Zach Butters um, from your boys, who we've shown a lot of love to tonight. Uh, but another one's Isaac Heaney. I think he's been a player that's mm. sort of shown the promise of becoming that Toby Green player I was just alluding to. Um, every time he seems to t- look like he's about to become an elite player, he gets injured. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if this is his uh, sort of ascension into elite status. Mm, great shit. <sighs> Jeez, let's, list, let's list more. I was just gonna, I was just gonna <laughs> say before um, you were talking about Jake Stringer could blow the game to bits. It's games like those where they rather absolutely shine like a supernova, yeah. or they just go into their shell and just <laughs> like that's when they get called sort of pretenders and don't show up to big games. But um, yeah, the finals makes diamonds through pressure. So uh, yeah, we'll see which big players stand up. I think Heaney's a great shout. He tore Frio up and he's been in really good form. Great call. Well, given this is a finals predictions, I think to wrap it up and just sort of uh, give the title just justification, I think <laughs> if you got you guys have probably done it all before on your own channel, so if you guys haven't seen it, check it out. I'll put some links down below, but I think we'll do uh, the grand final, who the teams are going to be, um, probably the the your tip, potentially a margin, and maybe even Chuck in a Norm Smith. I shot you not going first, so I'm going to throw it to the pair. <laughs> oh, um, great. Going, <laughs> Just under the bus. going purely based on my <laughs> <laughs> predictions before with the 17 and 5 and the 25th of September and the full, moon. <laughs> full, full moon, me flying to Perth. Um, oh, yes. I'm yes, gonna, Anthony's I'm, coming to Metro's. <laughs> yeah. You know Don't take our women, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> Caden knows I can do that, so um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm tipping a port. I'm going to go generic. I think Port D's granny. I think the top two make it, and I'm tipping Port by eleven. <laughs> oh, I'd be so shattered. A Norm <laughs> Smith medalist is Connor Rosie. Wow, oh, you've got to give it to Travis Boak. That's stiff. Rob, I thought Robbie well, Gray. Might hang on, hang on. Look, I can throw in. <laughs> you know, Travis Boak is getting it in my eyes, but I have to be fair to the Gross. twenty-one others playing on the day. I have to be unbiased and go. Yeah, to I the have role to be unbiased. <laughs> I'm not definitely. Well, I could win by ten points, and Travis Boak wins because he wears number ten. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, that's what I'm going for. Jesse, go to you, mate. What do you think? I'm glad I went in first because I'm pretty sure my Andrews are going to say, say, uh, say the same thing. <laughs> I have, I genuinely think we have six sides that most years would be a contender quality. Okay, so I all agree. the way down to Sydney. Um, yeah, so you've got um, uh, all the way down to Sydney. I still think the Bulldogs and Sydney are still an outside chance. They won 15 games and that uh, was the ra- uh, win-loss record that the Dogs and Richmond had both years that they won the flag. Um, really? So... Unlike previous years, I generally think as well with no away finals for some of these teams um, or, and some no home finals, it's really open. But I will lock in Melbourne versus Brisbane, cool. and I think it's going to be a ripping grand final. I, th- I think the D's um, break the minor premiership curse for the first time in eight years. I, th- I think they'll win the flag by 14 points. Who, who do you have winning that first qualifier this week? I've got the D's winning it. So Brisbane do it the hard way. Do it the hard way and then knock off Port in Adelaide. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Get 
stop you hurt no <laughs> oh god Drozy what have you got yeah no in my predictor I went uh, D's versus Brisbane in the grand final and the and the power just fizzling out and being irrelevant <laughs> no no. Uh, <laughs> no 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 you better hope those borders uh, shut buddy let me tell you <laughs> oh come on now we can have a fisty guff come on now <laughs> um, nah so I'll, I'll go I'll go Melbourne versus Brisbane in the granny but I just don't I don't have the vision of Melbourne winning the grand final so it's um it's a bit tricky to predict but I think they've uh, been the best side all season so I'm going to tip Melbourne to beat Brisbane maybe Port in the grand final but I'll I'll, I'll actually I'll go I'll go Melbourne beat Port in the grand final how about <laughs> I don't even know if, if that timeline makes sense but that's right um, anyway I, I reckon Clayton Oliver does a dusty and goes uh, Brownlow Norm Smith Premiership wow wow I, I just quietly I think Clayton Oliver's weirdly being slept on for the Brownlow he he's always like whenever I see it discussed it's always like that Bond wines and then people throw up like a took miller or a parish and then like an oliver but mundy i reckon he is so <laughs> right up there it's not funny i wouldn't be it wouldn't be surprised if he gets it done um anyway that's my little rant uh, my prediction for the grand final i hate that i am going to back my side in like I, I feel sick i don't want to i want to say that we'll go out in straight sets and really lower the expectations but um i'm going to lean into it why not i, I think the d's if we can win this week I think this is probably our hardest final in in a weird way. I feel like this qualifying final, which gets us the bye, I don't see this team losing in a prelim. I think they are just so hungry that you won't be able to dangle the carrot that close to them and not give them a shot at going through with it. So I think this is our hardest final. I think if we beat Brisbane, I don't know who we're going to play in the qualifier, but I think in the grand final, it'll be the D's and the Cats. That'll kill me. I don't want to live through that, <laughs> but I think it'll be the D's and the Cats. Jeez, can you strike lightning three times? Can we beat the Cats three times in a year? Probably not, but I hope we do. I reckon D's over the Cats by 20 in the grand final, and then, yeah, probably Clayton Oliver for the, Oliver for the norm. Things I'll would just... be balanced again after that, wouldn't it? After beating Geelong twice this year, I think I would. I think I would go another really six better. inches. I think I would just be able to walk around this town. Which way? <laughs> oh, <laughs> horizontal. <laughs> a horizontal inch. That'd be nice. Can Is I it growing say, not a shower? Can I just say as well? I'm not. Like, I genuinely believe that the D's are the best side in the comp. Like I don't think. I'm not just saying Port will win because I'm Port fan. Partly yes, biasness is there, but. When you're genuine, like Caden can agree, and the two Perth boys won't because, well, they're not there. But you, know, you can, you genuinely, when you're this close, you can genuinely believe that you you're there. Like you're, you're three finals away, three wins away from winning. Like you two, you win this week. Like last year, we won against Geelong at the Adelaide. Hall. Same final as last year. Bet them, made the prelim. We came up against the tougher side in their peakest of forms. To make it this year, you've got no Richmond. There is no barrier. There is unpredictability. So it's anyone's game at the end of the day, I feel. I mean, you can have your favourites, but on your day, anyone's beating anyone. I mean, we could see the Essendon drought be broken. They go on to win three finals and win the flag. Like, it's just so unpredictable, I think. This nah. Year. Nah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you're right. Like Shut up, Anthony. Travis Boat's doing the triple. I think he's the brown one, the Norm Smith, and the flag. Yeah. You almost had us, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, I'm scared for all the Bombers faithful. I've been copying um, an absolute pasting in the comments recently. They've been going back to me... Um, my season predictions and just tell yes! them oh, I know nothing about Same. football. Oh, was, <laughs> oh, yeah, I've been confident from Essendon fans on my season predictions as well. Confident my preseason, my preseason expect uh, predictions. I had Brisbane beating Collingwood in the grand final, but uh, <laughs> subscribe to oh. True Footy for more expert analysis. <laughs> I, had, I had Collingwood seventeenth, got an absolute baking by about one hundred and fifty of them, and I've gone through every single comment. Oh, and that's great! About it. That's a great feeling. Seventeenth, baby. The other eight, 17, I got wrong, but that's all right. It doesn't matter. Collingwood. <laughs> Bring back right. the bars, baby. <laughs> Beautiful stuff, lads. I really appreciate it, uh, you blokes hopping on and helping me out with my season predictions. It'll be a nice, nice little 40-minute video for people to watch. Um, 
yeah, I really appreciate you blokes joining me. We'll have to do the AFL YouTubers Roundtable very soon. All the links to the lads down below. Um, I appreciate everyone watching. I appreciate everyone getting around the videos, and I'll see you all very, very soon for some more content. Cheers.